So I guess I'll just get started with the question. So this is just a quick one right off the top. But what inspired you guys to become filmmakers in the first place? Um, I actually don't know what inspired me. I, I woke up when I was like literally 10 years old uh, on, a, on a morning before Christmas. And I was like, I want a video camera. And I was lucky enough that my dad um, didn't question it. And he got me one for Christmas. And I just started making films. And I, I think I just fell in love with it. And I've been making stuff ever since. And I... I, I just love the feeling of making something that and watching someone enjoy something that I've made. Yeah, I I grew up like my mom really loved movies. You know, she came, uh, she always used to like take me and my brother out of class early on Fridays and, and, and make us wait in line at like a big movie coming out. And, you know, like, so I think I like fell in love with these movies as like these things that people wait in line for and like go see a crowded movie theaters. And like I grew up on those kinds of movies too. So that sort of like, you know, it was before I even fell in love with movies, it was just like enjoying that experience and then associating with that experience. And then like, I think around that same time of like where I could get a, 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 a camera, I picked up the ones that my family was using for like home videos and then use an extra tape. And then this is like, it's crazy. Cause like, God, it's so weird because like back when I was doing it, like you'd hear all the filmmakers take, talk about their time and it would be back in the day with different technology and we were using US technology. And now it's like, wow, back in the day, we used to have like DVR tapes and you would like rewind and you'd shoot and then you'd pick your take and then you'd like, you'd, you'd rewind back to the exact moment that you needed a cut and then you'd go shoot your cut and then come back to your thing and you'd literally edit it live. So I used to make movies that way through, through it when I, was a, when I was a kid up until high school and just kept doing it, just kept doing it and, and got to film school and was able to, was able to uh, luckily to get, get a chance to make it for real. Yeah, that's really cool to hear. Um, so as a member of the disabled community, I found it to be a very bold and welcome choice to have your protagonist be a member of the disabled community as well. So what inspired you guys to shine a light on disabled representation and center the film around her? Because I, I know, as you mentioned before, it, normally films like these don't center around members of the disabled community. So I found it yeah. a great choice. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, like, you know, growing up, like, you know, at least when I was in high school, which was like 10 years ago, um, you know, it was like the movies that you would see that featured people that looked like you were always stereotypes, you know? And like, I think like, uh, you know, I'm sure you feel the same way being part of your own like minority group, you know? And I think like it, it, the idea that like, I always wanted to break out of that. And the easiest way to break out of that is just portray those characters in different lights. And, you know, I wanted like a brown kid to be cute and like charming and all that stuff. So I think like, half of the half of the the solve for that is just by giving those characters and not making it a big deal but just making them like kind of fully dimensional characters and for us like chloe was that you know she's so smart she's clever she's um extremely witty very ingenious sort of like a genius in her own right those are all quality traits that are so outside of disability but like by putting those two together hopefully it's like people who are in you know hopefully first graders aren't watching this movie but like young people who are watching this movie who get to like see that and then subconsciously connect like, hey, those personality traits, that type of person can go together. And like, I think very subconsciously those kinds of like world openings is A, what movies can do that nothing, very few things can. B, like make the world a better place in a, in a very cheap kind of way of saying it because like we all, like the more empathetic we become and the more open we become, I think like the, the more we're able to kind of progress as a society is the grandest way to say that, but just so that people can see it. And I think that's is the short answer. And I think like on a on another level too, it's important to, to us to cast authentically and to, to find an actor, um, you know, with a disability themselves because far too often in Hollywood movies, that's not the case. And A, it's the right thing to do. And, and B, this character has to do so, so much as related to the, the disability and so much like action things. And um, we just felt like, you know, no one's gonna be able to do that as authentically as someone who's actually living with a disability themselves. And so I, we, we hope in, in another like way that, you know, films take note of that too and, and will cast authentically more often. I was just gonna say that I really appreciated how you guys made that choice to make sure it was an actual wheelchair user and not just some other actress because it was great to see disabled representation fully done on screen. And as well, like, I feel like in Sarah Paulson's initial monologues, like you made it clear that like she would say like that disability, even though it was a part of her, it didn't define her. And we see, as you said that, she was a very well-rounded character who goes through much growth and not to spoil anything, but in the final third of the film, there's numerous reveals that were handled in an incredibly respectful way. So how did you guys make sure that throughout the writing of the film, you guys were able to create such an authentic character 
without succumbing to any of those stereotypical cliches that I know you try to shy away from. Well, thanks, dude. That's very nice of you to say. Um, uh, I think the, the biggest thing that we all did collectively was just sort of like open ourselves up to changing the script and changing the story and changing the production and changing the process very slightly by our lead actor. You know, I think like Kira really affected the story in bit, like in a lot of tiny ways that added up to a movie. You know, like she, we constantly asked her like, would your room be like this? Or would you say this? Or would you do this? Or what does the title mean to you? Is the title offensive? Is the ending offensive? Is like, you know, like how can we compensate for this and make sure that we are putting something out in the world that is overall a step forward um, as opposed to a step back. And I think like that, it, like just being open and bringing other people in because like we're none of none of the like you know, me Nat or Sev none of us are part of the disabled community but like here it is you know and like I think like just making sure that we're listening to someone who knows something about this world uh, uh, throughout the whole process was something that ended up obviously and clearly making the movie a lot more specific um, yeah and like talked to a lot of while writing it talked to it like a a, a a disability studies professor at Brown University spoilers 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 so like. Um, you know, at the end of the film, at the final, final scene, and you know what she does, like, at the, in that whole sequence in the original script, that character, Chloe, was walking. And one of the things that the disability studies professor told me was that it, like, without telling me really, was that it was sort of suggesting that her arc was complete because she could walk, as opposed to her arc being complete because she was a complete character. And so immediately, we just changed that role, and, like, she's using a wheelchair at the end now. And now we're like, what we're doing is like saying like, look, her movie's over, her arc is complete. And her arc is complete because she got the freedom from her mom and her arc is complete because like, look how fucked up she became and look what she's doing to her mom, you know? But it has nothing to do with the ability or disability. And I think like that to us was like the examples of us opening up a little bit and trying to make it as, uh, as um, kind of welcoming as we can. Kira was such a huge part too. Like I remember when the first time we met with her, she was like, ask anything you need to know and and I'll be honest with you guys like it's kind of an uncomfortable thing to talk about sometimes but she was like if we're going to do this together you know nothing's off the table and, and we really appreciate that because even from a you know production logistics standpoint we felt like she was an open book and we could just ask her like what do you need how do you do things and not make it like this kind of you know weird taboo thing um, and that was really helpful and from a story perspective too I remember like even down to I don't know if you've talked about this Anish but like in the, the final couple of days in our sound mix, we were like deliberating over this like one line that we were ADRing. And I remember we were stuck and we, we weren't sure which way to go. And we called Kira and she literally like helped us figure out which way to go with, with a line in the movie, which is one of, the, one of the many ways she impacted the story. And really quick, one last question before we wrap up. What advice would you guys give to aspiring young filmmakers who are trying to get their projects made and advance in the industry, especially in such a turbulent and uncertain word, world? Um, uh, so basically, yeah, I was just debating who talks first, but um, the, uh, I mean, it's, it's, when you add in the turbulent world, it makes it harder because to do in this turbulent world, I don't think anybody does, but in general, like the piece of advice that I give to, um, you know, aspiring filmmakers or filmmakers who are trying to like have like a big break or something, you know, is to like for the ones who haven't made a feature film yet is to really break out in the short film space. You know, I, I really think like the key to building the blocks to getting to a feature start with a short film usually. And it's a movie that should only be like maximum four minutes, but usually two to three. And like write a story that you really love, but most importantly, uh, write it for a brand. You know, find a brand that you love and find and like find a way to tell the story that you want and incorporate that brand to a point where like if that brand had a logo at the end of it it would also be a really cool commercial for them and i think then make this thing send it out to that company and get them to like retweet it or share it or make it a commercial on their own you know and like slowly now if they do that you've got that brand's commercial on your resume and now you can get the next thing so like to kind of just think smart not just like not just with your heart but also with your head yeah and for me like I guess the only advice I can really give is like from my experience and, and that is like even if you want to be X kind of filmmaker you want to make big budget things with stunts and whatnot if you have an opportunity that you know comes in front of you to do Y take it because it's just as important to just start doing things and start making things and getting experience as it is like getting to that goal of what you want to make um, so just you know just start doing the thing that's the easiest way to to get out in the industry. Yeah, and thank you guys so much for your time. And I can't wait for this film to be released and for virtual audiences everywhere to be able to 